Hi guys, Chef Joe and Chef James here with our new series, Hen Culinary at Home. Hey everyone, James here from Haddon Culinary. Uh, if you're watching this, uh, you purchased our uh, Valentine's dinner package. Joe and I put together a great uh, do-it-yourself package. We cut out all the prep work for you so you can easily put together a five-star restaurant meal at home, top quality. So I'm gonna walk you through everything. Our first item uh, that we're gonna work on is our appetizer, Coquille Saint-Jacques, a scallop gratin. First thing we're gonna do is uh, turn on our heat start to get our pan hot. Now you want to make sure you have a uh, non-stick uh, pan for this with uh, some decent uh, amount of surface area. Uh, while that's getting hot, we're going to prepare our scallops. So we have some really beautiful uh, scallops here that you know came from our butcher shop at Haddon Culinary, of course. Uh, and we're going to season them with a little salt and pepper. We want to go on both sides. Kosher salt and white pepper. All right, so we're all ready. Now, uh, the olive oil that came in your kit, you're going to go ahead and pour that into the pan. And you want this to be about uh, medium high heat before we put our scallops in. Okay, once our pan has come up to temperature, uh, we're gonna go ahead and place our scallops into the pan. And you want to be patient with this. You want to get a, a really nice sear, you know, on both sides. It's going to keep all that uh, flavor in. And, um, you know, it's going to take about you know, three to five minutes to do this. So while we're waiting uh, for the one side to sear, uh, we're going to start to uh, prep our mushrooms. So you're going to get a package of um, ground beach mushrooms in your kit. And all we're going to do is take them out and just trim the bottom just like that you may not need the full package in fact i'm only going to use about you know three quarters of it you could save uh, the rest of it for something else make an omelet with it or whatever you like So we're about three minutes in right now, and we're going to go ahead and check the color. It's a little light, so we're going to keep going, maybe another minute. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a really nice golden brown color on our scalp. So we're gonna go ahead and, and flip them and continue to sear on the other side for another three or four minutes. For our next step, uh, after we've taken the scalps out, you're just gonna set them aside. We are going to uh, prepare uh, the pen. So you're gonna find a little, uh, a couple sheets of aluminum foil in your kit. And you're just gonna make like little uh, nests, if you will, uh, for the scalp shell so they don't uh, roll around in the oven. Okay, so you're going to uh, get 
a pack of uh, scalp shells like this, and it has a little bit of butter inside. So you're gonna um, spread the butter inside the shell. And we're just gonna lay them on the pan like that. So we're gonna put that to the side for now while we make our sauce. So uh, the pan that you seared the scallops in um, actually you know, contains a lot of flavor you know, from the searing. So we're gonna use that same pan uh, to make our sauce. So we wanna keep that hot. Crank it up uh, to medium high. And we are gonna go in with the minced shallots. We're gonna give this a stir just until they're translucent. It's gonna be very quick. You know, this is about 15 seconds. We're gonna go right in with our mushrooms. Give that a stir. And we're gonna cook these guys down for about a minute or two so they get soft. So for our next step, uh, we have uh, white wine, which comes in your kit. So what I'd like you to do is pull the pan away from the heat, add the white wine in, and you can put it back on. So you want this to reduce by about half. So we're gonna cook all the alcohol off and you know get all that flavor in there. So once we are uh, reduced by half, uh, we're gonna go ahead and add our bechamel. Next, you're gonna bring that to a boil. So we're gonna season this with salt, and a little bit of white pepper, just a pinch. Okay, so once we have that up to a boil, now it's time to finish it. We're gonna take uh, this butter here, whole butter, we're gonna put it in, and now we're just gonna stir. To get all that butter incorporated, just keep a stir on it the whole time until it's melted. This is gonna make it very rich and flavorful. And it's also gonna thicken it up a little bit. So, once your butter is melted, we're gonna cut the heat off and we have some chopped tarragon. We're gonna add that in at the very end. And now your sauce is complete. Okay, so once we have our sauce uh, complete, uh, we're gonna go ahead and build these guys. So I like to put a tiny, tiny bit of sauce in the bottom of the shells with a little mushroom. Then we're gonna go ahead and place our scallops in. Like so. Followed by more sauce. If you have a little extra, don't worry about it. You could serve it on the side and save it for something else, whatever you like better to give you more than not enough. So, uh, to finish these off, we have some uh, really nice Gruyere cheese. We're gonna go ahead and put that on top. Followed by our uh, sourdough breadcrumbs. So this is a homemade sourdough bread. Uh, we made in the breadcrumbs and it has a little little butter incorporated inside this dish is very rich but delicate at the same time so now uh, we're going to go ahead and put this in the oven uh, we're going to go 425 degrees you know you want something pretty hot and you want to get a nice crust on the top with the cheese and the, and the breadcrumbs we're looking at about uh, 12 to 15 minutes depending on your oven
Okay, so we're all finished. Uh, nice and golden brown and bubbling and we're ready to plate here. So all you have to do, so you're, you're gonna get a, um, a container of pink Himala Himalayan salt to put on the plate. Uh, that's gonna keep uh, it from you know rolling around the plate. Nicer presentation than the aluminum foil, obviously. And so you're just gonna pick these up with tongue, be careful. Place it on top of the bed of salt. And we are all done. Hi everyone, Chef Joe here from Hen Culinary. I'm gonna be walking th uh, you through your next steps to prepare your entree course of your Valentine's Day package that we prepped for you. The first step is you're going to be uh, dressing your french fries or your steak frites with the beef tallow. So you're going to melt the beef tallow that we've packaged for you in the microwave for anywhere between 45 seconds to one minute. So it's in liquid form. Take the fries, throw them into a bowl. We've, uh, you know, pre-blanched these fries so that way they're ready for the final state of just crisping up in, a, in, a, in an oven at, high, at a high temperature. So I'm gonna take the towel, and just toss them and you're gonna let them get coated nice and evenly. And this is going to position yourself to have everything ready all at the same time once the steak is done cooking and, and resting. So you're just going to line them on, on a, uh, a sheet pan, lined with parchment paper. And then what we'll do is we'll season them with salt and pepper once they come out of the oven. And the beef tallow uh, is something that, uh, I mean, is essential for this dish and might be uh, a little unfamiliar, but you're a little, you're, you're more comfortable with it than you know. Uh, you know, beef towel or the beef fat uh, is why you have a great juicy burger or why the steak that you're about to eat is, is, is phenomenal. And it's a, it's, it's just a familiar flavor that we're going to be using to, uh, enhance the flavor of our, of our uh, uh, steak frites. So again, you're going to have them laid out on a sheet pan and then we're going to move to our next step. So now that we have our steak frites ready to go, uh, oven ready, uh, we're going to move on to searing our uh, smoked ribeye. All right. So just open the package and in the package, you'll find your cowboy cut smoked ribeye. And then there's a pat of butter and some sprigs of fresh thyme. You're going to reserve the pat of butter and the sprigs of fresh thyme for when we sear the second side of the steak. So you're going to first season both sides, okay? Okay, a little bit of cracked black pepper and a generous, por generous portion of salt. Okay, just kind of pat that down. And then we're gonna do the other side. Okay, and then meanwhile, you know, we, we had our pan uh, heating over uh, medium heat because we do want to allow enough time uh, for the ribeye to sear in the pan without it burning. Okay. All right, and then we're just going to, and as you can see, I mean, it's, a, it's a beautiful chop uh, that we smoked and prepared for everybody. It, it, it's, it's, it's pan ready and uh, smoked to a, to, a, to a rare state. Uh, still, still pretty raw, but rare. So our goal is to really get a great sear on both sides right and then you're going to be very close to being able to serve it so 
We're gonna take the olive oil that we have packed for you. Okay. Add that to your pan. And just make sure that you have an even layer of the oil across your entire pan. And then we're gonna add the ribeye to the pan. Okay, you can hear that sear, you hear that sizzle, okay? And what I like to do, I just like to kind of firmly press the chop down, okay? And this is going to take, you know, over, over the heat, over the medium to high heat, it's gonna take anywhere from two to three minutes per side. And it's important to uh, ensure that the pan that you use allows for uh, the, the chop to lay flat, okay? Uh, for if you if you don't have a pan that is wide enough with enough surface area, uh, you do have uh, the ability to cut the chop off the bone. Uh, seemingly, when we uh, you know go to serve it, you know you're going to slice it, and it's going to be off the bone anyway. I mean, so if you do have to uh, cut the bone off, you can just just save it for for the presentation because it's very important. You're going to be sharing this dish. All right, so. We're checking on our steak now after we've had it searing for about two to three minutes on the first side. And taking a look, and uh, look, that's beautiful. That's what you're looking for, everybody. So we're going to continue on with the same approach for the other side. And again, just, just firmly pressing down with your tongs or whatever utensil you have to make sure that the, uh, the other side is laying flat. As you can see, I have nice even colorization, uh, uh, caramelization for this side, and that's because we pressed it firmly down when we initially put it in the pan, okay? So, uh, you know, the, the, the very next step that we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be adding the butter uh, and the fresh thyme to the pan and then basting the butter. Uh, but before we do that, you, you still wanna allow, uh, you know, uh, an initial sear for about about two to three minutes too. So that way, um, you know, you're, you're cooking the other side evenly. This is uh, perhaps the third or fourth time that we featured these smoked ribeyes through hand culinary, through various menus. And it, it's it's by far, I mean, you're, you're gonna try it soon and, and we hope you'd agree, but it's by far the uh, most delicious ribeye steak that you're going to ever have. Especially when you prepare it the way we are. Okay, now we're gonna add our butter. So we're, we're almost there. You know, it's about, I'd probably say, a minute away from looking like the first side, All right? And then we're gonna add the butter and the fresh thyme. And what you wanna do, just kinda be careful because that fresh thyme is gonna pop a little bit. Okay, kind of step away. Okay, but you want to melt your butter completely, right? And I'm going to grab a spoon actually, so that way you're getting more of the butter and you don't have to uh, tilt the pan as much. Because if you tilt the pan and you take it away from the heat for too long, you're not going to continue searing. So, you know, you've got that beautiful compound butter that we prepared for you. And the fresh thyme. And all that flavor that you already have in the pan to begin with. And you're just kind of basting it. And while you're doing that, the, the butter's browning. And now you could really see why that this, this is going to be the best ribeye that you ever had. Okay. okay, let's take a look. All right. So we're just going to take a peek at the other side now. And I'll actually flip it over for everybody. So yeah, so now we have an identical sear on both sides. Okay. All right. And the next step we're going to do 
is going to be dependent on uh, you know, your preference for your temperature. We're gonna cook our steak to medium rare, so we're going to take it to about 120 to 125 degrees, because while it rests, uh, you know, you're, it's gonna carry over for another 10 degrees. And sure, you can cook it for as long as you want. Um, you know, I'd say right now, uh, we're still at a raw state, and you can continue cooking it on the pan or go into your oven. For this process that we're doing here, we're gonna go into our oven. So crucial that you have a meat thermometer. Uh, so that way you can just make sure. I'll meet you back when we're ready to cut the steak, all right? While we're waiting for our steak to come out of the oven and get the temperature, we're going to heat our Bordelais sauce. All right, so we have this packed here, all right, which is, this is just a, a rich demi that we've cooked down for you all day and uh, reinforced with uh, bone marrow. And then to finish it, you're just gonna Heat it up over medium to high heat, and we're just gonna butter it out. So, come over here. Okay. All right, I mean, that's gonna take a minute or two to, to heat up, and you know, we have our steak ready. Okay, there we go. Look at that. So, Beautiful, look at that. So, we have our steak out of the oven now. because We brought it up to our temp desired temperature of 120 degrees. And I'm just gonna take it out of the pan. Just wanna take it out of the pan and, and, and rest it on a, on a uh, surface that is uh, not as hot, obviously, as the pan that you're cooking in. So it doesn't continue cooking. You really want all of the cooking process to stop at this point. Right. So while we have our steak resting and while we have our sauce heating up, we are going to take the mushrooms that we have packed out for you. And there's a nice wild mushroom blend that we've uh, pre-roasted and brought everything to the peak of its flavor. So that way it's nice and easy for everybody. We're just gonna take that container of mushrooms and add it to our oven alongside uh, our, along, along with our uh, steak frites that we have pre-dressed with the rendered beef fat. Okay. All right, so we have uh, the mushrooms and, the, uh, and the, the potatoes in the oven now. And we just have the Bordelais Warming up, okay. Okay, it's about, it's about there. And to finish it, I'm gonna take the butter that we have pre-wrapped for you. And just kind of wait for it to get to a boil. Have that ready. And at this point, you should really be thinking about, uh, you know, your, your your platter or whatever plate you're going to be presenting everything on. And we recommend presenting everything all on one, uh, um, on one on one one plate. <clears throat> We're going to be kind of building everything all together on this beautiful wood board that we have. So, uh, you know, everything's going to be timed all together and coming out of the oven all at once. All right. As you can see, sauce is getting hot, starting to bubble around the sides. You definitely want to make sure that your sauce is uh, heated through and hot and ready for the butter. Otherwise, you know, your butter could melt, you know, and that's something, that's the last thing that you want. You don't want the sauce to break. We have everything timed uh, all together. So, you know, your, your steak frites should take about 10 minutes. The mushrooms should take about 10 minutes. And it's the same amount of time that we're going to allow uh, our steak to rest. Okay, and then I'm just gonna Add the butter, all right? And just gonna make sure that you're stirring that in. Okay, just kind of just swirling it in. Okay, it's going to enrich in the sauce and also make it thicker. All right. 
And your butter's already melted in, incorporated smoothly, and then you can cut the sauce off the heat. And we're pretty much ready to cut the steak, and that'll be the next step. All right, everyone, this is what we've all been waiting for. So our ribeye has been resting for uh, more than 10 minutes while our steak frites have been in, heating in the oven and our uh, mushrooms have been roasting in the oven or heating up, our oven roasted mushrooms have been heating up. So what we're gonna do is we're going to begin plating our entree and I'm just gonna remove our fresh herbs and just grab the ribeye by the bone and you're just going to have the knife follow the edge of the bone. Okay. okay as you can see. And then and we, you want to reserve the bone, kind of place that on your platter first. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're, we're going to cut the steak on uh, a nice bias cut. All right, and then we're going to fan it out and shingle it. So it's right in line with the bone, all right? Okay. okay, all right. All right, and then we're just gonna shingle that just like that. Clean off your surface. Okay. And okay, there you can see we have our beautiful smoked ribeye, our butter basted. All right, and then we're gonna grab the uh, steak frites out of the oven. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Beautiful color on them. We have our oven roasted mushrooms. Okay. And what I'm gonna do is we're just going to season our fries. Okay. And do salt and pepper. Okay, and then to plate, okay, what I'm gonna do is take your mushrooms and kind of lay them right over down the center of the ribeye. And kind of lay the extra right in the back end. All right, and then you're going to take your Bordelais sauce. And just drizzle that over both. Okay. So now we have all the flavors of the beef demi, the butter, the roasted mushrooms, all just descending over the ribeye, the smoked ribeye. Okay, right. and then we'll take, just clean that up. and then on this side, I'm gonna take the steak frites, crispy fries, just kind of gather them up with your tongs, and pile them high, right next to the bone. Okay, beautiful, look at that. Okay. All right, and then what we'll do, and the last step is we're gonna take our garlic mayo and just spoon that onto the side of the platter closest to the fries. Okay. Okay, 
And now you are ready to enjoy the next course of your Valentine's Day package. Okay, so on to the best part, dessert. Hopefully you still have room. Uh, we're gonna make a very simple uh, galette. Uh, galette is nothing more than a free form pie or tart. Uh, we decided to do that just so you didn't have to have any uh, fancy equipment or anything or pans. Uh, this is very easy, it can be done on a cookie sheet. Um, so uh, we are gonna start with uh, our Haddon Culinary homemade uh, pie dough. Uh, which we make a lot of every day. Um, so you're going to be provided with a portion of it uh, for your galette. And the first thing we're going to do is uh, flour our surface. So you're provided with a little bit of uh, all-purpose flour. We're just going to dust your surface with the flour. Place your pie dough on, put a little bit on the top. Okay, and then you want to use a small rolling pin, something a little on the lighter side. Just dust your pin a little bit with flour. And then we're just going to gently um, uh, start to roll this out into about an eight inch circle. So you're going to be provided with a cardboard circle here. And I'm going to show you, we're going to use that for later, but you can use this as a you know, a measuring tool for uh, your your dough. So we're gonna wanna go about eight inches, so it's gonna be about uh, two inches uh, beyond the circle here. So uh, just very gently, just keep flipping it around. Try uh, to keep the circle shape the best you can. If you see it start to roll back like that, that means you need a little bit more flour. Okay, you can even flip it over. So you can see I'm not putting that much pressure, uh, only you know a little bit and just we're gently rolling it out. It's a very good idea to, uh, before you start uh, the whole dinner package, to pull the dough out um, early so it gets to be room temperature. Uh, you don't wanna be doing this while it's cold. Okay, so we're almost there. We're gonna check. So we're about, an inch and a half so we'll go like a little bit more again don't worry about if it's not a perfect circle okay so there we go we're like a little bit beyond six inches around eight inches now next you're going to take your uh, almond filling that we provided here and you're going to use a small offset spatula or whatever you have and we are going to spread the filling in a six inch circle. Okay. Nice and even. Okay, and then just to verify, I'm gonna take our cardboard and just measure like that. That way we know we sp spread everything out evenly. Okay. Next are fresh raspberries. All right, you're gonna have a little bit more than you need here. So you could save them for whatever you like. And we're just gonna put them face down onto the filling. like so. This is so simple, very easy. Um, you could do this with any kind of fruit you have for future reference. We make uh, a lot of galettes at Hagen Culinary, especially during 
uh, farmer's market season. A lot of different uh, sweet and savory applications. And uh, our, our customers love them. So we're pretty much filled up there. I have, I have a little bit left over. We'll save those for later. You could even use them uh, for a garnish on the plate. All right, now we're gonna take uh, our dough and we're gonna fold it up. So there's no uh, right or wrong way to do this. Um, you could do whatever, whatever pattern you like, but you know, I just like to just fold it up and follow it around until the dough is uh, folded up. Now, don't worry about the fact that we covered most of the raspberries up because you know, as it bakes, it is gonna subside a little bit because of the uh, butter in the dough. So what you wanna do is just give it a little firm press so everything kind of stays, all right? And that's, that's the uh, uh, building of your galette, okay? So now we're gonna go onto our sheet tray lined with parchment paper. You're gonna to wanna to get a uh, spatula and get underneath. Just be careful. Lift it on your pan and we're just about ready. So now, before it goes into the oven, we're gonna take the egg wash that was in your kit, use a pastry brush and we're just gonna go around until we get it evenly coated with egg wash. This is gonna give it a really nice, uh, deep golden brown color. So it's that simple. Okay. So once we have it egg washed, uh, we're gonna go right into the oven. Uh, 425 degrees, it's gonna take about uh, 15 to 20 minutes. And in our last five minutes of baking, we're gonna add our uh, candied almonds. So here we go. Okay, we're, we're almost there. Uh, we're about five minutes out from finishing. It still needs to be a little bit more brown. But at this point, uh, we're gonna add our uh, candied almonds, which are already done for you. You don't have to do anything to them. So we're just gonna sprinkle these on the top. And we're simply gonna go right back in the oven. So um, the last five minutes, the, the almonds are gonna get a little bit more toasted and caramelized and we'll have a beautiful finished product. So here we go. Okay, so here it is, our raspberry almond galette is finished. So last thing we're gonna do is take the apricot glaze that was in your kit, and we're gonna just put a couple drops of water into it and melt it down in the microwave. All right, and then you're going to take a pastry brush and just kind of brush it along the edges. This is going to give it a nice shine and a little extra sweetness to the galette. And that's it. So you're gonna to wanna to let it rest for about 10 minutes before you lift it onto your platter um, because it's still very hot and you know it's very delicate. So let it rest 10 minutes and you just lift it onto your platter, cut it in however many pieces you like, and we're good to go.